All right. Well, good morning, all who are joining us here and also on the computer. Um, I have a few announcements that I want to share this morning. Um, the first one is that it is newsletter week. So if you have any items for our newsletter, please make sure Joyce gets those um, if possible by Wednesday so that she can put that together. Um, also, um, a reminder that today is Good Shepherd Sunday. And we are taking a special offering for Lutheran Social Services of Illinois. Um, they do a lot of work throughout the state of Illinois on a lot of different topics. Um, but most of you have had some experience um, with our men's family um, here at Worship and their experience with LSSI in the fostering and adoption program. Um, so if you'd like to give an offering here at church, there is a special plate for LSSI. If you are watching this on Zoom or later today, um, you may you can mail a check to the church um, made out to LSSI, and we'll make sure all those offerings get to them. Uh, also, uh, a reminder that next Sunday is our first Sunday of the month uh, for May, so we will be having communion next Sunday. So if you plan to join us um, online, uh, I would suggest that you have some bread and wine or juice uh, whatever you'd like to use. And then here in person, we'll have our communion cups as, um, again. Uh, also, uh, we got notice this week that Synod Assembly is coming up in June. Uh, this year, they are doing it by Zoom. Uh, and so it's gonna be different days and different times. Um, if you are interested in going, uh, it is June 5th and 6th. That this year, the Saturday and Sunday, um, it will be on Zoom from 9 to 3 on Saturday and noon to 3 on Sunday. Um, if you'd like to kind of experience a Synod Assembly, but experience it in a totally different way, uh, please let Pastor Matt or myself know because we need to get those registrations in um, soon. Uh, and then um, the last announcement I have today is an addition for our prayer list, um, and that is Dean Schmoey. Dean is um, Arlene Glenn's son, Butch Smith's nephew, um, who was diagnosed with cancer. And, um, and I think Rick probably wants to make an announcement after I am about him, but we'll be adding him to our prayer list um, today as well. So Rick, did you want to mention the build? Yeah, we're, we're building a wheelchair ramp Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Tuesday at 9 a.m. So 1849 North and Illinois Route 115 will be building a wheelchair ramp for Dean and the, he lives on North Main Gilman. <laughs> His wife already there down. So if you can be out there, that'd be great. I know it's planning season, fellas, but uh, sorry about that. Right. So if you're able to help Tuesday, 9 a.m. at Bob's um, house. Are there any other announcements this morning or prayer list items um, either here or on Zoom? All right, um, the last note I wanna make is we're trying something a little different again today. Um, Mark has graciously agreed to run the um, screen for us, the um, remote. So we're gonna try to do this in connection with each other. Um, so have a little patience if things go from one place to the other, um, but it means that I don't have to be trying to click and watch and lead. Um, so we begin our service this morning with our prelude uh, led by Connie, led by Connie. Um.
Good Shepherd Sunday is still one of our Sundays in Easter. We begin our worship with our Easter proclamation. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. continue with our Easter confession and forgiveness. <clears throat> Loving God, we confess that at times we do not share in the joy of the resurrection, but are caught in the worries of the world. We confess that we do not always live in the spirit of new life, but remain discontent, grumbling, and anxious. Forgive us for not sharing in the good news. Forgive us when we find it more comfortable to worry and complain than to risk the joy and encouragement of new life in Christ. Call us back to your ways, O oh God, to seek hope and reconciliation, restoration and peace. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Christ is risen. The stone is rolled away. There we go. 
Christ is risen, the stone is rolled away, the tomb found empty. We see Christ in every helping hand, in every heartfelt gift, in every choice to restore life in this world. We are called to new life, a life of forgiveness and reconciliation. You are forgiven. Accept your forgiveness and know that God loves you and desires great joy for your life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. O oh Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, Pastor Matt will do our readings for today. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Psalm is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Second reading is from 1 John chapter 3. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and we reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. And we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. 
All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Here ends the reading. All right, I invite all of our um, young people to unmute, or Corbin, if you'd like to come up, you can. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to see I see the men's crew. Hopefully I'll be able to see them up here on the screen. Um, all right, so I have a picture for you today. Um, hope, Corbett, I know you'll be able to see it. Hopefully, uh, oh, it's gonna be hard to see on the camera. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try walking up closer and see if you guys can see this. Just a little bit. Can you guys see who that is? Uh, candy cane, upside down J. Okay, right, so that, yeah, it looks like a couple different things, right? A candy cane. Um, yeah, if I turn it that way, it'd be a J, you're right. Um, has that, have you ever seen anything like this or know what it might be used for? Yeah, a cane. Corbin. Oh, like for walking, right? Yeah, sometimes you've seen people who need some help walking and they use that like a cane. Uh, Jamil, was that what you were saying too? Yeah, I said a cane. Yeah, like a cane, right? Okay, oh, there you guys are. Um, what if this was really tall? What if, what if it was like up, like the curve was up here and dropped down? You ever seen anything like that? No, not very often, huh? Maybe, maybe if you've ever caught um, some video of like the Pope, sometimes he carries one, right? It's something that um, you guys probably aren't familiar with because we don't have them around anymore in the same way. This is a stick that a shepherd would carry. Right now, how many of you have played shepherds in our Christmas programs? Yeah, I know, Corbin, you have. Oh, I think I have played shepherds, right? What, what, do you think, what do you think of when you hear the word shepherd? A guy that raises sheep. Right, sheep, right? Who <laughs> takes care of sheep? Why would they need a giant stick? with a hook like that on it. Corbin. Maybe we can what? Gather them, right? Yeah, so you can use this kind of crook thing up here to bring them a little bit closer, right? Anything else? I got one. What, let me hear it. Annie. Um, to, um, sometimes to, to scare the wolves away. To scare wolves away, you're right. You're right, yeah, they, they, right, big stick, right, big stick, stick, you know, leaves, gives you some distance from them, right? Like, also, it's the king of dreams. Sorry, say that one more time. It's like where they have, where his brothers went off to go to the lake and he had to take care of the sheep and the wolves came and he will, and his father's went around the stick to scare away the wolves. Right, right, yeah, chase off. All, you know, all sorts of stuff, right? Keep all the bad things away. Uh, they also, if you think about back where Jesus lived, it was also very rocky and kind of unsteady. So they could, they would use it like a cane as well. They'd also carry sometimes a stick that looked like that. I'm going to come up closer again so you guys can see it. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Now imagine this thing in the center was like a big rock. Why would they have that? Don't you don't know. Right? Again, you're not going to see him very often. Okay? That's what I like to call a giant whacking stick. Right? This was specifically to keep away the bad things. If they needed to um, <clears throat> strongly encourage the sheep to move along, right? Because sheep are not always that smart. And sometimes they need a little stronger help along. Um, well, today is called Good Shepherd Sunday, and it's called that, we always have this on the fourth Sunday of Easter, it's called that because we read about Jesus being our shepherd, right? So Jesus tells us all sorts of things, and he says, I'm sorry, wait, say that again. To say, Annie? And we will the sheep. We are the sheep, you are right. And I'm the sheep, 
right? So, so Jesus tells us about these things, that he is our good shepherd. And we hear the psalm that we probably have all already know about the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And um, a lot of times we get the image of Jesus, the shepherd with the, with the crook, right? With, with the candy cane looking stick, right? That, that he is very gently gathering us in and bringing us all together. But sometimes Jesus also carries the big whacking stick, right? He tells us today that, that a shepherd's job is to keep away the wolves, and the bad things and to, to keep us safe. And so sometimes we have this image of Jesus being a big, tough guy, right? Because if you think about if we're the sheep, what are the wolves that come after us? Because because so far I've never had a real wolf chase me down. Fingers crossed. Bully. Right. Right. So what, what kind of what kind of things are wolves? What, what, what are bad things for us? Um, kill okay, death. Yep. Corbin, yes. did you say something? I'm not one. <laughs> I have. Okay, all right, Annie, you go ahead and then we'll go to Corbin. What? Uh, bullies. They bully us. Bullies. Yep, yep. People who hurt us. Did you think of something, Corbin? <laughs> no. Right. It's kind of hard because there are a lot of things that we could consider wolves, right? Um, schoolwork sometimes feels like wolves, right? When it's chasing us down and our projects are due. Um, but even, you know, things like um, lies, right? They, they, can, they can be, you know, feel like they're chasing us, feel like they're trapping us. And so today when we talk about Good Shepherd Sunday, we have this, this beautiful image. You're going to see, I'm going to put a, put a picture up before the sermon of Jesus in this beautiful white robe, and he's got this beautiful white lamb draped around his shoulders, right? And that gives us that sense of comfort, of, of a wonderfully loving Jesus. But I also want you to take with you a big, burly, strong Jesus with a large whacking stick who isn't afraid to help us chase away the bad things in our life right, to get dirty and to get down and to help us, the sheep, find our way to him. So let's have a prayer. God, we thank you that you are our shepherd, that you guide us and keep us safe, and that sometimes you prod us along and remind us who we're supposed to be, and that always you try to protect us and keep us safe. We thank you for this so much. You are our good shepherd. Amen. All right, Corbin, you can go ahead and have a seat. Thank you. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I, hang on, sorry. I, that was my fault, Mark. There we go. All right, not sure. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. May be seated. This Sunday is so happy and relaxing, isn't it? Good Shepherd Sunday. We hear the 23rd Psalm. We sing about God leading us and guiding us. There are green pastures and still waters. And Jesus calls us his flock. What could be better than that? We can conjure the images in our head. Hang on, let me share this real quick with the uh, rest of the people on the computer. All right, you see this? This is the image we often carry in our head. The white-robed Jesus picking up and cuddling the soft, fleecy lamb. And then we know that all is right with the world. And we should know that. We should know that in Christ's arms, all is right with the world. So let's embrace that. Let's take that moment and think about how we feel when we are cuddled in the arms of God. But today we also need to know something else. We need to realize that Christ telling the people that he was the good shepherd was enough to spark the leaders of the temple into trying to kill Jesus. That's right, we never get that part of the gospel. Right after these verses, the leaders gather together and they say, because Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, we need to gather some stones and murder him. That's how angry I am the good shepherd made them. How is that possible? Well, for them, there were two very good reasons to be that angry. First and foremost, the shepherds from their history were Moses and David, right? The rescuer of the Israelites' slaves and the great king who built the temple for the people, who brought peace and order to the kingdom. They are the giants of the faith. And Jesus is comparing himself to them. Perhaps even claiming to be a little better than them. And then second, it happened to be when Jesus was saying this, the festival of the dedication of the temple. What we know nowadays as Hanukkah, an eight day celebration when the temple was rededicated and the Jews took it back from the Greeks sometime in the second century BC. But every year it was a celebration, a time when people traveled to the temple to honor its presence in their lives and to remember the stories of Moses and the Exodus when God commanded how the temple was to be built. And the stories of David, they remembered when he brought the ark to the temple so that God's footstool would rest among them. It is in that time that everyone is focused on God, the shepherd of the Israelite people who gave them Moses and David and the temple. And Jesus is basically telling them that's not as important as I am. Oh yeah, that makes them angry. It's kind of a big deal. I couldn't imagine if someone walked into this sanctuary on a day when we were celebrating an anniversary or Christmas or Easter or any Sunday and told us that none of that was as important as him or her. Forget the building, 
Forget the other people gathered around you. Pay attention to me. How do you think that would go over? Exactly. The leaders were unhappy. So the image that we have of Jesus, that one I showed of the good shepherd in the white robe with the white lamb is a very different image than the one he meant to convey to those leaders. Not to say that it is better or worse, but it is different. We have more than one type of good shepherd. And we should note that difference because we need more than one type of good shepherd. So often we want the kind and cuddly Jesus who makes us feel a little less sad and a little less lost. We picture this wonderful savior walking the green hills. Again, I'm guessing in a pristine robe, gazing lovingly on all his perfect clean sheep, right? That's us. But if we know anything about the shepherds of Jesus's time, it's that they were wanderers. They didn't have a home. They probably bathed a little or a lot less than others. They were fairly grimy from an outdoor life and they chased after dirty and smelly sheep. And as I told the kids, they carried pretty big whacking sticks to keep away the harmful things like wolves. Does that sound like any image of Jesus you have ever seen? If we happen to have some artists out there, I ask you, I beg you, I challenge you, bring me a painting of that Jesus, the good shepherd with the big tangly hair, the smelly Jesus with a dirty sheep and a giant whacking stick. I would love to see that. Because while a comforting and kind and pleasant, pristine Jesus is important, especially when we usually read the 23rd Psalm as we gather at funerals, we have to remember that there is also a place in our world and in our lives for a big, strong, dirty Jesus carrying a big whacking stick. Because have you ever found yourself somewhere you didn't want to be? Or watched someone you love go where they shouldn't go? Perhaps they or you have been in trouble, right? Someone made a mistake. Someone took a wrong turn. Someone ended up with an addiction or an abuse or in jail, or maybe through no one's fault, there is the struggle of finances, emotions, physical being. There are times where we feel cornered and stuck and trapped in by evil and self-doubt and uncertainty. Or maybe we have been forced to watch as someone we love falls apart or breaks down or gets lost. And it's in those moments we need a nitty gritty Jesus who isn't afraid to take on the wolves, to challenge the hired hands who would abandon us or lead us astray. I want a Jesus with a big whacking stick who isn't afraid to defend not only me, but also those I love and if need be, knock some sense into them or me. I cannot picture that white robed Jesus wallowing into the mud and mire of my life to rescue me from the muck I'm stuck in. But Jesus the good shepherd sure would. That's what the leaders surrounding Jesus really fear. 
the challenge to the mire they have lived in for so many years. They are used to the pasture they are in. They function pretty well among the chaos. But I think that even they could recognize that Jesus just may be calling them hired hands who have no real concern for the sheep around them. And while life under Roman occupation may be difficult, it's really not all that bad for the leaders. And should it get bad, I'm not sure they would stand up for the people or the temple. Fear makes hired hands of us all, seeking to protect ourselves first and foremost. And yet here today stands Jesus, a man who claims that like Moses, he would die trying to protect his people. And like David, he would challenge those already in power to follow what God commands him to do. And like no one ever before says that he would not only give up his life, but have it restored as well in the lives of those around him. No wonder the leaders are upset by him. No one is supposed to be greater than the heroes of old except the Messiah. And the Messiah would not be a shepherd a nobody, a regular guy spouting irregular nonsense. And yet that is exactly who Jesus is. Our savior was a regular guy saying and doing the irregular. So the pristine image of the gentle shepherd fits him on those days, we need the knowledge that good triumphs over evil and death, that we can be cleansed as well. But we also are given the image of a man who looks like us, talks like us, sits and has conversations with his friends like us, so that we have the knowledge that God knows what we are going through and that he went through it too. And today we can add a new image of the rough and ready savior who cares nothing for his own appearance or his own safety when his people are in trouble. When we need the wolves around us scattered, when we need to hear our names called because we are lost in the wilderness, and when we need Jesus to squish through the mud and the muck of our lives with a giant whacking stick to help free us. He is that kind of shepherd too. He is the good shepherd. The good shepherd indeed. Amen.
of the Nicene Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer us in steadfast love. Loving shepherd, you know your own and your own know you. Your voice calls to us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hope giving shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we may lay down our own needs to help others in need. We remember especially this morning, Irene, Dixie, Lee, Marion, Julia, Marilyn, Don, Tim, Pat, Marcia, Doug, John, Pam, Heidi, Judy, Steve, Pat, Greg, Pastor Lisa, David, Joanne, Jeff, Barry, Mike, Buddy, Bonnie, Landon, Dean, and all those who rest in our hearts and our minds. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Eternal shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In the assurance of resurrection hope, we remember our loved ones who have died in you. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the new hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you trusting in your never ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Father who created you sustain you. The Son who died for you live in you. And the Spirit who burns in you breathe in you anew. Amen. turn to our postlude.
All right, well, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful week. Enjoy that 80 degree Tuesday versus last Tuesday. <laughs>